Hey guys, welcome to Data Trek, your one-stop channel for all the data science and machine learning updates. In today's video, we will look at BERT model to generate entities embedding. BERT stands for Bidirectional Encoder Representations from Transformer. It's a language model based out of Transformer. What is Transformer? We'll look into that. And which part of the Transformer BERT uses? Uh, we'll look into that as well. And uh, what is BERT pre-trained on? And how can one fine-tune BERT to any of their NLP specific tasks? We'll look into that in the first half of the video. In the second half of the video, we will use a pre-trained BERT model to generate entities embeddings. These entities could be e-commerce products, hotels or properties in hospitality domain. It can be food items in uh, food industries uh, and so on. So uh, once we have the entities embedding, which can be e-commerce product and so on, we can quickly use these embeddings to find similar kind of other entities. Like given an e-commerce product, but could be a substitute. Given a food item that you like, but other can be recommended to you. So using these embeddings, we can generate uh, quickly the similar entities. It, it's used, it can be used in recommendation engines. It will be a condensed rep uh, representation of the entity, which can be stored very efficiently. So these are some of the advantages of embeddings, which we can generate using a pre-trained word. So uh, without any delay, let's get uh, deep into it. Bidirectional encoder representation from Transformer. Uh, the paper was published by Google AI Research. Uh, it has empowered the machine learning community by presenting the state of art results in wide variety of NLP tasks. So basically, the BERT model it's pre-trained uh, on some tasks which we look into it. And once you take a pre-trained BERT model, which has very deep understanding of the language and context, you can just fine-tune it very quickly on your specific task, and it's seen that it produces a state of art results. Uh, the BERT key wins lies on applying the bidirectional training of transformer, a popular attention model to language modeling. So BERT uses the encoder part of transformer model, uh, which makes it very powerful. In contrast to it, previously the LSTM or RNN or bidirectional LSTM kind of networks, they used to look at the sentence, like given a sentence that, uh, let's say love is all that matters. Given this sentence, they will process it word by word, either from left or right or both left and right uh, sequentially, like one, one go left to right, one go right to left and then process it. But what transformer does, it looks at the whole sentence at once. So it has a more deeper understanding of the context. So the paper results shown by language model, which is bidirectionally trained using BERT, can have a deeper sense of language context. That's why BERT is called bidirectional encoder representation from transformer. It looks at the uh, sentence from every, uh, like both the directions. Now, uh, coming to the transformer architecture, we have said that BERT is very powerful because it is based out of transformer architecture. But what is transformer architecture? So, this is the transformer architecture which consists of an encoder and decoder part. So, uh, transformer was designed to uh, solve language translation kind of tasks. For example, given an input, love is all that matters, what we want the output to be all the English sentences to be transferred to some language, let's say Hindi. Love is all that matters, yaar hi sabse jada maine rakta hai. So the transformer has two components, one is encoder, other is decoder. So encoder, what it does is, it takes the input and provides very rich encoded representation of each and every word in the sentence. And how it does that? It does using multi-added attention and uh, some feed-forward neural networks uh, along with some non-linearity added to it. And once this encoded representation of words are available, which are fed to the, trans, uh, the decoder part of transformer to generate the final translation. So, uh, one thing about the transformer architecture is that it consists of encoder and decoder part where the words are transformed into their encoded representation. But to generate this encoded representation, they are passed through multi-headed attention. What is attention? I will make a detailed video of it uh, in my channel where we will talk about attention, what is multi-headed attention, what is self-attention and so on. So, for uh, here just quickly explaining it. For example, uh, if the sentence is love is all that matters, that matters, what matters? Love matters. So that has a strong dependency on the word love because we are talking about love. Similarly, for the sentence, France is a um, very uh, good country. It has many monuments to visit. So it, we are talking about the France and let's say the, the, the country never disappoints you. Which country? France country. So we see that the word have a strong dependency on the previous words, right? So that is what we say attention. That that words may have to attend to previous words and as well as while during the translation, it the, the translation happens word by word, right? So for particular word, it may have a strong dependency on some uh, encoder word, sorry, right? Some input word. So this is attention. Attention basically means how much to attend to 
some of the previous input some inputs may need more attention by generating the particular output and some input may need inputs may need less attention so that is what attention mechanism is in transformer there is multi headed attention so multiple layers of attentions are working in parallel which makes it so powerful now coming to uh, the bird model bird only uses the encoder part of the uh, transformer why is that we will look into that so bird make use of transformer and attention mechanism that learn contextual relationship between words in a text that's why uh, bird is so powerful because it uses transformer and it is able to learn the nitty gritty details of the language very deep understanding of the context and transformer consists of two part encoder and decoder encoder reads the text input as i was saying and generates an encoded representation using non linear ti dead multi headed attention and so on and this encoded representation of each word the the orange uh, uh boxes are the encoded representation of each word each word have their own vectors decoder will de take these vectors and translate it since bird goal is to generate a language model understand a particular language it just uses the encoder part of the uh transformer architecture so given love is all that matters what we will get finally we will get each word will be transformed into an abstract representation which i am calling as the vector representation number of output vectors will be same as number of input vectors that is number of words each word will have their uh, uh representation uh, encoded representation and also there will be class label what is this class label it's uh, used in the pre training of bird and while the fine tuning you can use this class label for your specific your nlp specific task now some uh, going again deeper into bird model that how it uh, accepts the input and all Uh, so before any pre training of the bird can happen the input has to be massaged and decorated with some extra metadata so bird uh, uses three type of to embeddings one is when the input is provided let's say dog is cute and likes to play so uh, the word has to be passed through word piece embedding so uh, word piece embedding is a vocabulary of some words and each of your input words should be in the word piece embedding if it's not there it will be broken and find uh, somehow adjusted in uh, in the input now there that is the token embedding which is the word piece embedding a part of it there is also something called segment embedding Se segment embedding is that you can provide two segments or two sentences at a time because the pre training of bird takes uh, two input sentences but in your some fine tuned task you may not need two sentences you can just avoid the second one but the pre training needs two sentences so you have to specify which one is sentence a and which one is sentence b so it will just be a binary kind of uh, representation 0 or 1 uh, denoting which is whether uh, the sentence a we are talking about or sentence b similarly there is position embedding so we have seen that lstm rnn kind of neural networks they are slow because of the convolution and uh, recurrence in case of rnn and lstms so but in case of uh, this transformer or bird it takes all the inputs at one but we have to provide it about some information that this is position word one word position two word position three word that's why position embeddings are used so the input has to be massaged into token embedding segment embedding and position embedding before passing it to the pre training uh, part of the bird so all those things are mentioned here that it uses word piece embedding for the token embeddings there is a class token uh, which we will see what's the use of it so class token uh, precedes the first sentence and between the two sentences there is also a separator you can see this right separator and segment embedding is used to mark which is sentence a which is sentence b and position embedding since it has no recurrence or convolution we inject the position embedding to help it understand that uh, which word uh, the word that it is processing is at which position it helps the network learn faster now the most interesting part why is word so powerful why it learns the language with such fine details the reason is the magic lies in uh, its pre training so bird is trained on wikipedia corpus and it's trained on two tasks so it's a pre trained language model that you can fine tune for your task it's pre trained on two tasks first is masked language modeling the approach is very simple to mask some percentage of input tokens at random and predict those masked tokens from the available context information so uh, let me explain so love is all that matters is the input sentence love will be masked or sometimes matters will be masked that is it won't be uh, shown to the network and the network has to uh, predict that the masked or the uh, missing token is actually the word uh, love so how will it do is uh, we know that given a sentence uh, with many words the encoder will generate a hidden uh, uh, encoded representation of each word now that hidden vector representation of each word can be fed through a softmax and we can just predict that which word has the highest probability so the network should be able to 
predict this mask tokens and to make the mask tokens learning even better what is done is 80% of the times tokens are replaced with uh, mask that is those are masked 10% of times they are just replaced with random uh, token so that uh, even any random token should uh, even if it's not masked the network should be able to predict that it was a, it was not the right uh, word uh, the actual word should have been something else and similarly 10% of the times tokens are left unchanged so that the network is able to predict yeah the token was actually already right so we will have hidden vector representation of each word now this hidden vector representation can be passed through a softmax layer and number of outputs will be number of vocabulary words and it should have the highest probability for the word which is actually missing or which is masked so the masked language modeling masks some of the words randomly in the input and the uh, hidden vector representation should be such that it should be able to predict the masked word so the uh, language model the bird language model will have a deeper sense of context and language the second interesting task uh, which the bird is trained on is next sentence prediction so remember i was talking about the class label and also the segment and bidding segment sentence one segment two we'll see all of that here in next sentence prediction the bird training process uh, uses next sentence prediction there uh, the model gets an input pair of sentences two sentences and it has to predict if the second sentence is the subsequent substance sentence of the original document that it has to tell that whether the second sentence is just the follow up sentence of sentence one or not and how it's trained 50% of the time the second sentence comes after the first one and 50% of the time the second sentence is just some random sentence uh, from the full corpus and uh, if those are the subsequent sentences the class label pass through a uh, sigmoid uh, uh, activation should be able to tell that whether it's the subsequent sentence or not and if it's random the sigmoid should be able to tell that the probability should be close to zero that those two sentences are not following up each other right so this is how pre training happens and very interestingly so shown that this is how the pre training will happen you are you will if you provide it sentences with some masking it should be able to predict the masked uh, word and also it should be able to predict the next sentence right and once you have this pre trained neural network what you can do is you can just provide your uh, things here they have some the example of question answer thing that there is a question and there is a paragraph you have to find in which portion of the paragraph the answer is this is a fine tuning task which is called square given a question and a paragraph you have to tell that at which part of the paragraph the answer lies so once it's pre trained on um, mask language modeling and next sentence prediction we can just quickly fine tune it for any task which can be squared or named entity recognition and so on so these are the two tasks uh, uh, bird is trained on which makes it so powerful learning all this in wikipedia corpus makes it so powerful that it can be fine tuned for uh, any nlp task and it's seen that it's provide it produces a state of art results now coming to the fine tuning part that you have uh, uh, the pre trained bird you can just download the weights from internet those are readily available we will do that in our exercise as well once you have this uh, downloaded weights how can you fine tune it so fine tuning is straightforward since the self attention mechanism in transformer allows bird model in many downstream tasks so for each task simply plugging the your data set produces a state of art results and uh, there are two types variants of birds which are available one is base 12 layer which will pro which will have 110 million parameters and it will produce 768 dimension um, of the hidden node uh, vectors representation so i told right given each word it will be transformed into a vector that vectors dimension will be 768 while in the bigger larger model which is of 340 million parameters the hidden vector representation will be of 1024 uh, dimensions and the, low, uh, the base model will have 12 attention and the larger model will have 16 attention and and in terms of time also it's shown that uh, compared to pre training the fine tuning is relatively inexpensive with just one hour and single gpu or single gpu most of the uh, uh, fine tuned task which the paper presents can be trained just in one hour bird actually was trained using four tpus for four days uh, and bird large the bird base was trained for four uh, four tpus for four days and bird large was trained on 16 tpus for four days and bird large is more powerful than bird base right larger the model more powerful it gets but there is a technique called uh, knowledge distillation in which you can make a larger model small with very small uh, loss in the accuracy and also what a smaller model helps in faster inference so one video on knowledge distillation how you can make a very large model small with minimal loss i will be also making in my channel so stay tuned for that as well so both for attention mechanism uh, how it is attention self attention multi headed attention the nitty gritty details of how the mathematics works the video will come on that and as well as a video will come on knowledge distillation
which is used to make larger models small without uh, very minimal with very minimal loss of information now the paper of bird let's talk about the paper of bird which also talks about some fine tuned uh, results so it says that once the model is trained on wikipedia data on most language modeling and next sentence prediction it can be used in various uh, downstream tasks like multi genre natural language inference that given a given two sentences we have to predict that whether the first whether the second sentence is an entailment which is consequence of the first or a contradiction of the first or neutral with respect to first there is also kora question pairs where you, uh, given two sentences you have to tell that whether the two sentences are semantically equivalent or not whether the two sentences are same or not uh, the example could be uh, is bangalore a livable city is and so second question will be is bangalore uh, good to live both the questions are very similar so network should be able to say that these questions are similar so that as a use case kora can uh, merge the these questions so whenever someone is searching for those type of uh, uh queries they can be shown the answers of these questions right similarly there are other tasks as well and further many tasks the paper talks about which can be quickly uh, fine tuned for uh, uh, for from bird and uh, one more interesting task uh, which the paper talks about which i have already talked uh, before is squared which is like given a question and a paragraph you have to tell in which span of the paragraph the answer lies other is named entity recognition ner in ner task a sentence will be provided and for each we know that for each token each word one hidden vector representation will be produced it will be passed through a softmax and we have to identify that which is person name which word is organization which word is location medical code time expression quantity monetary value and all those things so named entity recognition helps to identify what is what is each words significance uh, in the sentence whether it's an organization person and so on now we have come to the second part of the video which will be shorter one much shorter one how can one use bird to generate entities embeddings and these embeddings can be used across domains hospitality domains for generating embeddings of hotel or properties for e-commerce for generating for e-commerce products and uh, multiple other examples i will give but what are embeddings embeddings are low dimensional continuous vector representation of entities storing all their qualities in a compressed way right and it can be used to find similar items that once i have the vector representation i can find that which other entity has similar vector representation it can be used to find similar items and since it's a compressed form it can be stored very efficiently it can be used as candidate generation or in recommendation system so it can be used in recommendation system someone has clicked something now we want to show similar kind of items so we can use the uh, embeddings that is the vector representation it's used a lot in candidate generation stage of recommendation system now Uh, what all embedding vectors you can generate? You can generate it for images, videos, text, document, users, product, music, etc. Right? For example, for e-commerce domain, uh, yeah, user embeddings are generated. That with similar kind of users, what they buy, we will uh, suggest the same thing to other users. And uh, similarly for products also, that the product embedding. See, if let's say the butter is uh, not available, we, what is the closest product we can recommend to the user? similarly in youtube and instagram you see lot of reels like you might have seen once you see a particular type of reel similar kind of reels coming starts coming right so it, these are also used to generate image and video embedding for and it's powered social media like youtube instagram it can also be used in um, medical industry to identify patients with similar medical records to identify what worked well for them right which treatment worked for them to identify patient with similar medical records it can be used in finance domain to understand that which stock or assets are very similar to invest on it can it's used in music industry the spotify app uh, recommends music based on the user taste and as well as type of music they hear so similar kind of music will have similar kind of embeddings it can be used in hospitality domain to generate embeddings for uh, properties which are similar in terms of location rating facilities booking service uh, it provides similarly in food industry to provide similar kind of food items the user usually eats right so embeddings have vast uh, use cases next question comes is how can one generate the embeddings this condensed representation of uh, one entity how can they generate it it can be generated through numerical data like looking at the click view and order transaction how the items are uh, clicked viewed and ordered together for example you will see that uh, if you are searching for something let's say a pen Uh, then you will see you will type pen and you will see various pens right so these items are all clicked together so uh, looking at the sequence in which items are clicked together or ordered together we can generate embeddings other is using the textual description of the product 
for example is sparkling orange juice and pricky pear beverage right which are, which are the similar items to that so using the textual data embeddings can be generated third is it can actually use both numerical and textual data which people do use these, these days numerical textual image and all those data are brought together to produce embedding which are called multi model uh, embeddings uh, i have i already have a video in my channel where i have used how can one use transaction data to create high quality product embeddings and where i trained on 1.02 billion rows on a single gpu which is freely readily available uh, uh, in a kaggle notebook so you can definitely go and check out this video in this video we will talk about the second one that given some textual data like i was talking about right sparkling orange juice and prickly pear beverage using just this textual data how can i generate embeddings for all the items and if some item is not available i can recommend the similar items right what is how the similar items are coming for uh, uh, using this uh, embedding uh, or vector representation right so we will look into that in this video and before that i also want to tell that why traditional token based methods like bag of word approaches like tfi tf term frequency inverse document frequency or jacquard matrix doesn't do very good job as the embeddings do the reason is this bag of word approaches don't understand the context they will also give you some vector representation but they won't understand the context the example is the embedding of the word server should be different in the sentence the server crashed versus the sentence can you ask the server for the bill both the things are both the words are same server but the context is different right this word based or ba bag of word based approaches cannot identify the context very well which embeddings are able to second is this bag of word approaches since just they are based on whether the word appeared or not they are pretty bad at synonyms for instance instance the color red and crimson have zero common words or characters right but they will be treated as separate pairs but actually they are they have the same meaning red and crimson both are both represent type of red color only which this bag of word approaches won't, like tf idea won't be able to capture but in embeddings it will identify that bag and uh, red and crimson they are used in similar kind of context that's the advantage of embedding the embeddings are trained in such a way that they are quickly able to identify that uh, two words are used in similar context for example um, this is a very good thing to have this is a great thing to have so great and good are used in similar context similarly red and crimson the um, embeddings would have identified that both are used in similar context right and also embeddings are uh, pretty good even if there are a lot of item descriptors but in case of bag of word approaches as the number of uh, words increases in the description they gets pretty bad so coming to our final approach before we jump into the code how we will generate uh, embeddings just from the textual representation and just using a pre-trained bird model we don't do any fine tuning you will take a pre-trained bird model and generate uh, the uh, pass it the textual description and generate the embeddings now what type of embeddings would you like to have uh, so mostly what it's done is uh, the entities are compressed to a 32 bit or 64 bit embeddings or you can use even 128 bit embeddings right it's up to you but you want a condensed representation of the entities just in 32 bit 64 or 128 bit something like that now what you can do is as the first step you can pass this item description which can be spread sparkling orange juice and prickly beer beverage through the bird model and for each of the word each of the tokens one of the hidden vector representation will be produced right which now if you are using the base bird model each word representation will be of 768 dimension and so just think of it 768 dimensions per word and if there are 20 words 768 into 20 such big representation you are getting but what you want a content just 32 bit or 64 bit representation right so we will get 6 768 dimension hidden vector representation of the class level as well as of all the input tokens there can be maximum of 512 tokens how to generate a fixed land product embedding that is what i was saying how to generate a fixed 32 bit dimension embedding out of it there are three options one is that you can simply use the class uh, vector which is the class embedding vector which will be of 768 dimension and say that this is my vector representation of the uh, entity second is you can either take the vector representation of all words and average it out to get one single vector which is the mean pooling similarly you can also do a max spell pooling take the vector representation of each word and for each dimension take the max of across all the words representation take the max across all dimensions and finally you will get a single vector instead of average it's a max of each dimension these are the three possible ways but which one performs the best 
we don't know. We will just try all of them and see which one is performing best. Actually, all of them works pretty good. But what I have seen, the meme pooling works worked best in my use case. I will show why I am saying that. But all of them works pretty well. Now, still the vector representation is of 768 dimension. But I want even condensed. Let's say just 32 bit or 64 bit dimension representation. But I can do. I can again compress 768 divided by 12 is 64 bit. So I can uh, average the values of 12 uh, uh, dimensions into one dimension. So I can just take an average. Similarly, I can do for next 12 bits, next 12 bits, and so uh, and and finally I will get a 64 bit embedding. So similarly in this way I can get a 64 bit uh, high quality understanding the context, deep understanding of the language uh, embeddings of the textual representation from the textual representation of the entity, and I can generate it for. Each and every entity, in case of e-commerce, it can be all the products, I will have the embeddings. In case of hospitality domain, I will have the uh, vector representation, uh, embedding the rep representation of all the properties, right? So in this way, I can generate the um, uh, embeddings from textual description. And there are also some libraries like popular sentence transformer that you can directly use. The library readily available. Internally uses a BERT network only to generate the sentence embedding. We could have simply used it, but we went through the whole process understanding the bird and what that what that library might be doing under the hood right so we have used the complete we have understood the complete process but but model is how can one use a pre-trained bird model to generate the class embeddings uh, not covering those under the hood of some library but doing it ourselves right finally since we have understood how to generate this vector representation or embedding of the uh, entity quickly let's see the code uh, you, I will make this code available in the description section and also all the videos that I talked about I have a video on numerical data to generate embedding I will provide in the description section and all the upcoming videos on knowledge distillation attention and much more uh, will be also I will keep in the description section um, as they come comes out okay so this notebook also will be available in the description section so this is the Kaggle notebook I have used Instacart dataset which is freely available and this Instacart dataset I have just used the product file where for each product ID I have the product description that uh, chocolate sandwich cookies all season salt. Uh, doesn't it give goosebumps that at the end of this notebook what I will have for each product I will show you that which are the similar products. So out of this 50,000 products I will have like top 20 or top 30 similar items for each and every item. So that is the motivation at the end of this notebook which will uh, which will quickly see. There are 49,000 around products. What I have done, I have just downloaded the pre-trained words, which are uh, pre-trained weights, which are around 66 million parameters. Those you can easily download from internet. Uh, and then uh, next thing is we need to tokenize, right? So for I have used the library to tokenize the input words of each and every product. And what I have done also, I have limited the max length of the product description to 20. Though 512 is the max length allowed, I have just used 20 because 20 is enough for my use case in this product description 20 is good enough and then uh, then what we do is we simply we use the final uh, layer of the pre-trained bird model and uh, few details that since we have 50,000 products and 50,000 into 768 dimension embedding for each and every word will be a lot to keep in memory so what we'll do we'll process in batches keep on generating in batches and uh, in the first approach, we will do an average pooling. In the second approach, we will take the 768 dimension of class vector and compress it to 64 bit and we will see which one is doing better. So what I have done is I have processed the data set in uh, batches and the vector representation are saved in this uh, bunch of files because everything can't fit in memory at once. So if you see here, what I have done here is I have taken the last output, the last output and taken all the uh, words which are between 1 to max length plus 1. So why 1? Because the first output is of the class label and remaining are of the words. So I have taken that first 20 words and what I will do? I will just take an average of this 20 words hidden vector representation which happens in this function compressed token embeddings. We can look at it. It will just uh, it will just take a pooling. Uh, it will just take an average pool and also it ensures that the padded words like some sometimes the description may be very small, right? So I I don't even have 20 words so it only does that average pooling around the non padded words and uh, finally also I, once I get 768 dimension I will further compress it to 64 dimension which happens in this line of code so I have given here that divide uh, take average across 12 bits so 768 divided by 12 will give you 64 bit dimension embedding and that's it I have the uh, embeddings for each and every product in these files which I will read and I will do a approximate nearest neighbor search using a library okay so I also have a video uh, on uh, 
approximate nearest neighbor both using annoy and uh, scan and library of google uh, so i will even provide provide the video description that how this approximate nearest neighbor works in the description section so simply i have used here the library this few lines of code and I, what i can get is an output the all the similar items so you can see that uh, for chocolate sandwich cookies the similar items are chocolate crunch chunk cookies chocolate butter cookies chocolate breakfast bites meal and double chocolate cookies and so on similarly for pure coconut water with orange pure coconut water with pearl pure coconut water with tropical for fruit pure organic coconut water and so on so you can see that it's like magic given a word from that entire data set given a textual description of the product from the entire data set i am able to generate similar items and i am able to power my empower my recommendation system or whatever be that end use case be now next what i did was i also tried the second approach where we will just take the class embedding which is 768 dimension and and compress it to 64 bit dimension and also i want to show some results for example in the previous approach only you see dry nose oil the similar items are nasal cleaning pot and ear drying drops and so on right so nose oil is there and some nasal and i think it is able to find and similarly next i will do for class embedding just use the class vector as the embedding and compress it and doing that if we see the output uh, chocolate sandwich cookies chocolate butter cookie chocolate chunk cookie. some ordering may be here and there but we are getting good similar items and for that nasal one you can see dry nozzle oil you are getting mild baby oil garlic oil facial oil and so on so the results are pretty good here as well see rendered duck fat duck fat and beef franks and all those things have come up but it seems that the uh, mean pooling is doing that little slightly better than the uh, class using the embeddings of the class label but we have to do more detailed analysis to understand which is the winner and also we can come up with measure to evaluate these embeddings one measure could be just see that all the neighbors how many times they are belonging to the same department or id or same aisle id because similar items are placed together or part of same department so in this way we can even come up with some evaluation metrics so this is the notebook which i will provide in the description section which will help you just get past the uh, textual description get the embeddings and then compress it to get your final compressed vector representation of the embedding so finally we have come to the end of this video which was slightly bigger because we covered a lot of things in the first part we covered but but model is how it's based on the transformal architecture which makes it pretty fast using the multi-head attention and non-linearity added and so on and it is able to learn the context or language pretty well to uh, generate high uh, high uh, value encoded vector representation of the input words in the second part we saw how one can use that those uh, output of bird that is the high quality encoded representation of the words to generate uh, embeddings and we looked at the text textual embeddings we also have a video on the numerical embedding in future we can make a video combining both textual and numerical as well as some uh, image representation of the product to generate high quality embedding hope you enjoyed the content please like and subscribe and stay tuned for more such updates bye